I have a friend called Geraldine and she lives just over there. Uh, Geraldine's uh, a widow and she's a washerwoman. She, she washes clothes by hand all day in cold water. And um, for that she earns about a pound a day. Geraldine uh, lives in a small shanty house with her three children and her elderly mother. And uh, she's the sole provider for the family. She then discovered that her daughter, April Rose, a beautiful uh, ten-year-old girl, uh, is ill. Her arm stopped working and uh, it was a real panic time for the family, real upsetting. And they took her to the doctor and the doctor said she had an abscess on the brain and uh, the treatment for the abscess was going to be 100 pounds a day and she earned a pound and Geraldine's distraught and she's crying and, and she's calling out to God to help her and I just wonder is that what you think that God wants for Geraldine that her daughter should die while she stands by and watches and can do nothing There's a family called the, the Castros. They have two children. And just because of grinding poverty, because they can't find enough food to eat, the children became incredibly emaciated. Their skin and bones uh, wasting away before their parents' eyes. And there was nothing that they could do to help their children. You know, unemployment just trapped by circumstances and each night they go to bed and the children are crying with hunger grinding hunger and Mrs. Castro watches her precious babies in agony of starvation and she cries to God she cries and she sobs and she sobs herself to sleep And who hears the tears of the poor? Who counts them? God says that he understands, that he weeps when we weep. And yet somehow Mrs. Castro felt alone. Who will stand with the poor? Who will dry the tears from their eyes? People here work really hard. They get up when the sun gets up and they, they work all day. And uh, they just try to get ahead in life. They just want to be able to pay for their kids to go to school and to be able to uh, provide three meals a day for the family. And it doesn't matter how hard they work, it doesn't matter what they do. Because they were born into poverty, because they have no education, because their parents were born into poverty, they're in this cycle that goes round and round and on and on, and they can't escape. It doesn't matter how hard these people work, there's no way that they can work their way out of poverty. And they pray to God, they pray for breaks, they pray that God will help them to give them a better life. And I, I just asked the question, I wonder, if God hears their prayer, why doesn't he answer? If God hears the cry of their heart, why doesn't he answer? Last year, uh, here, 250 houses were destroyed by fire. And those houses that, that were left uh, are perched on, on legs precariously above a, an open sewer. And people are forced to, to live like this because they, they own no land. And 
there's no prospect of them owning any land. They just uh, cling to life. But a house is not just a place to sleep. It's not just a place to, to lay your head. It's a place to bring up the kids, a place of safety. And Jesus said that uh, in his father's house there are many mansions, which is okay for when we die, but what about now? What about for these families here and now? Surely they deserve something a little more substantial, something more tangible in this life. After all, isn't that what God promised? When Jesus uh, walked on the earth, the Bible tells us that he came and he preached the kingdom of God. And over and over again, he, he told stories, parables, if you like, about the kingdom of God. He taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And isn't that who we're supposed to be? Aren't we supposed to be the people who bring God's kingdom here on earth? That we're the people who make God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the book of Isaiah, there's a description of the kingdom of God. And in uh, the 65th chapter, it says this, The sound of weeping and of crying will be no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. He who dies at a hundred will be considered a mere youth, and he who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will pl plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. They will not toil in vain, or bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While it's true that we can't help everyone everywhere, we can help someone somewhere. And Jesus aligned himself with the poor, and he said, what we do for the least of these, we do to him. We are making a difference. We're changing people's lives. But people, no matter how hard they try, cannot get out of the poverty trap. When we build a house, it's not just a house, it's a home, but it's more than that. It's the gospel. It's the incarnation of the gospel. This is what the gospel means, because we're literally bringing the kingdom of God. When we sponsor a child, and we give them hope, and we bring hope to the family, and we dry their tears, and we give them access through that to medicine, and to clothing, and to food, we're bringing the kingdom. It was St. Francis of Assisi who said, at all times, in all places, preach the gospel, and when necessary, use words. We can't change North Balawati without you. We, we just don't have the resources. But God has already given the resources. God's released the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And you and I are the stewards of those resources. And I ask you today, I ask you to, uh, to look into your heart and to see if there's some way that you could help this uh, beleaguered community, this, these people who are clinging to life. Already this year, two children have fallen uh, from the bamboo bridges and died. Another old lady has been pierced by bamboo when she fell. We want to change their life. And so my prayer is that Jesus, who embraced the poor, embraces you. 
and as he embraces you, he touches your heart with love and compassion for the poor. And that you, being full of love, might respond to the gospel message and that you might be the answer to these people's prayer. You might be the, the cause to dry the tears from their eyes. That it might be you that gives good news to the poor. I ask you to pray about your response.